We've gotten a good idea about who is the longest running query, both from SP who is active while it's running and from Activity Monitor while it's running. But maybe I want some more information. And there's plenty of information available. We can look at Query Store. Query Store is available on SQL Server 2016 and higher. It is configured at the database level. And I mean, we haven't put any effort into configuring it, right? We just turned it on very simply. In our test environment, we're just doing the mere minimum. We, in the real world, we wanna think about, hey, what are the right settings for our query store? But we just wanna look and see, can we get the information we want out of there with the default settings? If we want to use the reports in query store, we can do that. So this database is named SQL Challenge. And I can, if I have query store enabled in Object Explorer under SQL Challenge Database, I'm gonna have a folder named Query Store. We can look at things like top resource consuming queries. There's a, a built-in report that shows up when you install Query Store, and I've just double clicked it over here from Object Explorer. I just double clicked that and opened it. And my particular preference, whenever I open this, my particular preference is to click on this button here to change this pane from a graph to a list because I just don't find this graph very helpful. Like here are my query IDs by number. And then I've got one really big bar, but I like this view better where I can see, okay, yeah, got the query IDs available, but I can also see, is this part of a specific, no, like object, a stored procedure in the database or it's an object with a name or a function, right? Maybe it's ad hoc SQL, but this is actually, I can see some of these are part of the TuneMe procedure. I can see the SQL text and the duration. Here's the total duration, the total CPU time. I actually want to sort these. Let's go over here uh, to the right and let's see what we want to sort this by. Let's go ahead and change this to average and I wanna sort by average duration descending. So now I've clicked on average duration there. So I've got average set as my statistic and I've clicked on average duration so that the query with the highest average duration shows at the top. So this is our query who we have suspected all along. This only shows though the top 25 resource consumers for the database. So although we got lucky in this case, and I can click on this and I can see over here on the right, I can see that it's had more than one execution plan with their plan IDs. I can click on these and display the different execution plans at the bottom. Although that's cool, what if I wasn't lucky? And what if this is a database where lots of stuff had gone on and this wasn't like the slowest thing that ever happened in the database? Maybe it's an established database and our top 25 resource consumers by average duration are part of, you know, like a batch process that runs overnight and things are expected to be slow. Well, it might be tricky to find my stuff in there. So I might want to query the query store objects to say, hey, based on the queries that you know about, <laughs> I would like to see things for the procedure named TuneMe. So I've just joined from sys.querystorequery to sys.objects. And then I'm also joining to some other query store tables so I can see the text and the plan. And I'm saying I want information for the object named TuneMe. So now I don't have to worry about am I in the top 25 of the database. I know what stored procedure I want to tune. It is this one. And I'm querying back the different queries associated with dbo.tumi and I'm ordering by the max duration in milliseconds descending there. Let's go ahead and run this. And if I wanna use those reports, I can. I just, it can be difficult to find your query sometimes in that top consumer's report. Once I figure out what query ID I'm looking for, I can use the query ID and go back to the report. So it's not like you have to choose between using T-SQL or using the reports, you can use both. T-SQL can help you find some information that makes using those graphical reports easier. I've ordered by one of the duration columns and I figured out in my query over all the time that this query, these queries have run, what is the overall max, the overall average, and the overall minimum of duration? This is in milliseconds. And 
I can see that this number one query here, hey, that's our suspect. Let's go ahead and pop that open there. Sure enough, it's that select at the end who join, uses full outer joins to join all of those page numbers temp tables together. That's the one whose average duration is really, really high. And here is the query ID I want to use, query ID 11. If I want to grab that and go back into the reports, this time I'm going to open the tracked queries report because the tracked queries report lets me plug in a query ID. So let's open up tracked queries there. And once this is present, I can paste in or, well, it's not on my clipboard. Was it 16? Let's actually go oh, It's query ID 11. So I'm just going to type in my query ID, hit return. And now I'm seeing here are those two plans for the query. I have the chart up here is displaying this by, it says average here. We're displaying the average. And what metric are we using? If I click on the configure button here, I can see that it's on duration. So what I did here is I clicked on at the very top right, I clicked on configure to say, hey, what's up with this guy? Let's actually switch to CPU time just for fun. <laughs> and I'll go ahead and click apply. If I wanna look at different time intervals, I can change that in uh, the configure as well. So oh, query ID must be a positive integer. Okay, I see, I need to re-enter my query to track at the top. I it looks like I accidentally cleared that. So now we're back on our query. Well, if we're looking at average CPU time, I have this one, the blue one, plan ID 11. It has a lower average CPU time. Which one is that? If I look at my properties here, I don't necessarily have, I have my parent object ID here, but notice that I don't have any of the parameters that went into the stored procedure. That's because this query doesn't use the parameters. The parameters are used in other parts of it in terms of table population and other things. So sometimes when we're looking at this at the query level, it can be kind of interesting if it's part of a procedure. Hey, the parameters did influence for sure what plan I got because the parameters influenced how many rows are involved, what modifications happen, but the parameters aren't used in this exact query so I don't have them here readily. But we actually know, hey, sometimes this is fast and sometimes this is slow. Here it is when it's fast. <laughs> here it is when it's slow. So it's clear based on the average CPU time and average duration, which plan is the slow plan at least. Well, that's, that's a great way to figure out which statement is slow. What if we don't have query store?